これが運命です Hey, what's up, guys? So, before this video even starts, I just wanted to say that there's been a lot of misconceptions about Zhang Li recently. So, there's a lot of people saying that he's gonna be bad because of the fact that corrosion and shield ignoring bosses and enemies are gonna be added and implemented into the game. I just wanted to say, don't listen to any of these, and I'm gonna give you my reasons why. Okay, so let me start off with the first one, and that's gonna be initial damage. Now, if you don't know what that is, let me show you a representation. Okay, so as you guys just saw, I was at full HP and I got attacked three times by the Wolfhound without a shield. And watch what my HP is gonna go to. So, as you guys can see, I have 25.7k HP left after getting attacked three times without a shield on. So, this time, let's do it with a shield on. Alright, so this time I fully healed up and I have the shield up. But this time I let them attack me four times and I wanna see what my HP is gonna get to. Okay, so as you guys can see, I got attacked four times instead of three with the shield up. So that means four stacks of corrosion instead of three. And I still had more HP than I did without a shield. Now, just letting you guys know, these were the small rift towns. So if it's the bigger rift towns, then you're actually blocking more initial damage. So when people say that Zhang Li's shield is useless, they're kind of exaggerating. It's not useless, it's just less useful than it used to be. Now, when it comes to the second reason on why Zhang Li's shield is actually very good, you look at this right here, you pretty much remove. 20% of the enemy's resistance to elemental and physical damage. Now, just in case you guys don't know how damage works in this game, pretty much lowering the enemy's resistance is much better than increasing your own attack. Now, the last reason as to why Zhongli's shield is not bad is because the meta right now is the shield breaking meta. It could change anytime soon. And if you guys see this fucking piece of shit on your screen right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about and where I'm leading to. The new Sumeru place is probably gonna have very, very annoying opponents, very high damaging opponents, as well considering this Zhongli may be a very important asset for the future and with that misconception out of the way let's move on to the video all right so this video is gonna have five parts we're gonna have the talents and attributes we're gonna have the best weapons and slot for him his best artifacts his constellations and resonance with team comps now just keep in mind that Zhongli actually has three different individual playstyles, and don't worry i'm gonna be talking about the resonance and team comps the best artifacts and the best weapons and slots for each of these playstyles. and just to be clear the three different playstyles are main dps shield bot and burst support and according to my opinion and many opinion of other people the burst support is the best type of build so we're gonna get into that very soon so when it comes to Zhongli you have to first understand his kit in terms of main DPS he's not the best so leveling up his normal attack is kind of useless but you could still do it there's some people that are desperate and still need a good main DPS and Zhongli can actually do it pretty well uh, I even have a video clip right here for that Now, I was using a DPS build right there, and I'm gonna be honest, he's not the best main DPS like I already said, but there's no issue in building him like that if you want to. Alright, so when it comes to the shield, I already explained most of it, but pretty much, to give you a simple rundown, you wanna hold it every time. This not only summons a pillar which gives you energy every time it blasts, but you also get a very strong shield that I explained earlier. Now, as for how to make the shield stronger, there's only two ways. Number one is you upgrade your E skill, and number two is put maximum HP into Zhongli whenever possible. So before we move on to the burst, I just wanna talk about the E skill a little bit more. You pretty much have a 150% damage absorption from any attack but another amazing thing about a shield is that every time it gets attacked it gets a five percent increase in shield strength this can stack up to five times which means you can pretty much have a 25 percent shield increase all right now let's talk about the most satisfying burst in the game it does two things very simply but its effectiveness is amazing not only does it do a lot of damage for a 40 energy cost 12 second cooldown burst but it also petrifies the enemies for about four seconds which means they cannot move whatsoever now just to be clear petrification does not work on boss enemies now this 
this passive right here is what makes Zhongli just from already amazing unit to even better unit. Now, as you guys can see, based on his max HP, he will do increased in normal charged and plunging attack damage. He does more damage with his E, but that's kind of useless. It's only by 1.9% of max HP. Just in general, his E skill does not do that much damage. But the most that Zhongli benefits from this is the burst damage is increased by 33% of your max HP. Now, this one isn't a crazy passive talent like the other ones, but anytime you craft a polearm weapon, 15% of the ores are refunded. All right, so let's move on to the weapons and let's talk about his best main DPS weapon in slot. That will obviously be the Staff of Homa. You not only get a pretty decent base attack with a lot of crit damage, but you also get an HP increase and an additional bonus of attack percent based on max HP, which you already get obviously from your passive, but this is just even further. Next, we have the Primordial Jade. This not only gives you attack percent every 0.3 seconds you're on the field, but you also get a lot of base attack and some crit rate. So next up is the Deathmatch. This weapon doesn't have the best base attack in the game, but it has a lot of crit rate for good consistency of damage, and you obviously get an attack percent increase based on how much opponents are near you. Next, we're gonna talk about this very underrated weapon right here, the Lithic Spear. Not only do you get a very good amount of base attack with attack percent but for every character in your party who's from Liyue you get a further attack percent increase and crit rate. Now to put this into perspective if you get this weapon to refinement 5 and you have 4 Liyue characters on the team you will get a 44% attack increase as well as a 28% crit rate increase. Now personally I don't have the black cliff pull but the best part about it is that you can buy from the Paimon's bargains when it's in the rotation. It has an average base attack with a good amount of crit damage. The only downside is the passive which is very situational but nonetheless it's still very good for Zhongli. Now the two last weapons I'm going to recommend is the Crescent Pike and the Dragon Spine Spear. So the reason why I'm recommending these last into last place is because of the fact that they have physical damage bonus. Now the reason for this is because when you use your burst you don't benefit anything from physical damage and because of this you would rather run something like crit rate, crit damage, or even attack percent so you can benefit from both sides. Now if you're going to be shield botting there's only really two weapons you can use. One of them is the Staff of Homa because you get a 20% HP increase or you can use the black tassel which is the only spear in the entire game with an hp percent substat so pretty much at level 90 this weapon gives you about 47 percent max hp increase now i wasn't going to recommend this weapon but now that we're here i might as well the vortex vanquisher is actually a very good weapon for shield botting but i told everybody don't pull for this weapon because it's not best in slot for anybody that we know it has a decent base attack not even the best it has some pretty decent attack percent which is not very good when it comes to substats and then increases shield strength and attack percent based on how much times you attack the opponent and honestly it's really not the best weapon if you want to use it for any of these builds that's fine but that's if you pulled for it and i'll tell you again do not pull for this weapon let's go ahead and finalize the weapon section with the best weapons for burst support obviously staff of homa number one yet again no need to explain why and then obviously the primordial jade yet again if you want to do a lot of damage with your burst you're going to want that consistency and high damage and the primordial jade helps you with both of those another good weapon i would very much recommend is the skyward spine it has a very high base attack and has some energy recharge so that you can spam your burst and to top it off you get a little bit of crit rate next i'm gonna quickly go through the four stars you can't go wrong with any of these weapons first is the death match then we have the catch the next one is the wave breakers fin now the reason this weapon is pretty good increases your burst damage by a lot i can make a whole separate video on this weapon i don't want to go too in depth but obviously just use four teammates and you'll be doing a lot of extra damage for your burst next up is the favonius lance pretty good base attack with a lot of energy recharge so you're just going to be spamming your burst and then obviously if you have some crit rate you could just get some particles for your teammates which is very good especially at r5 the lithic spear the black cliff pole that we mentioned earlier another viable option is the star glitter this has some decent base attack and a lot of good energy recharge but the problem is it's passive which is why i recommend it last for the four star weapons and if for whatever reason you don't have any of these four star weapons you do have the black tassel which is still pretty good you get a lot of hp percent which is good for both your shield and your damage and for whatever reason if you need to do any extra damage against slime Next up is the artifact sets. So before I even continue, I just wanted to say one thing and a lot of people might disagree with me for this, but the four piece tenacity of Melaleith is actually garbage. Now, let me tell you the reason for that before y'all attack me in the comment section. Pretty much, number one, you don't have your Stone Sealy up 24-7. And if you guys don't know what the Stone Sealy is, it's your skill. It's your little Zhongli pillar. And even if it's up, 
as you can see from the gameplay in the background. The enemy is not always going to be around it, so it's not going to always proc. In my opinion, if you have C1 Zhongli, which we're going to get into later in terms of constellations, if you have C1 Zhongli, then the best thing you can use is Tenacity because of the fact that you can spawn two Zhongli pillars at once. So you're pretty much going to be hitting the opponents every time with it. Now that I got that off my chest, I will talk about what is objectively the best possible sets you could use. So this is how it's going to go first. We're going to have the four piece sets that I'm going to recommend. And then I'm going to have a bunch of two piece sets on the screen that you can all use with each other. So let's start off with the only four piece sets that you can use with main DPS Zhongli. That is going to be the four piece retracing Belive set and the four piece gladiator set let's start off with the belied set as you can see the four piece bonus when you are protected by a shield you gain an additional 40 percent damage for normal and charge attacks that's obviously good for main dps remember we're doing main dps first and then you also get that shield strength increased by 35 percent which means your shield can be lasted longer so you can keep on doing damage then we got the gladiator set bonus we have the two piece bonus which is obviously very good 18 percent attack increase very basic then we have the four piece bonus which is a increase of 35% damage for your normal attacks but I would 100% say it's better to go for a two-piece Shiminawa, two-piece Gladiator, or a two-piece Millilith all mixed with each other and the reason for this is because you get an increase in both your normal attack and your burst damage which you obviously want for DPS and the last thing I'm going to recommend is the two-piece Pale Flame set and the two-piece Bloodstained yet again I'm going to say this for the millionth time if you're going to go for DPS you might as well do damage for both your normal attacks and your burst all at once so let's start off with the main stats for the circlet you definitely want to go for crit rate or crit damage if you already have a lot of crit rate go for damage and if you already have a lot of crit damage then go for crit rate obviously you want that one to two ratio so you can have consistent damage then when it comes to the goblet it really just depends on what you want to do if you're running cryo zhongli with chang yun or some bullshit like that then you can just go cryo damage bonus you could do physical damage bonus or you could preferably just do attack and be all around and then for the sands 100 without a doubt you want to just go for attack you're going to get the most damage out of this h HP, you will get a little bit more damage you will get a little bit stronger shields but if you want the maximal possible damage then you just want to go for attack percent as for the substats your main priority as you can see on the screen is crit stats whether it be rate or damage then attack then hp then energy recharge so that you can use your burst more often to do more damage all right so let's go over this very quickly first you're going to want the two piece millilith for the extra hp which if you guys remember your shield is based off of your max hp then the two piece we're tracing by light set which is increase in shield strength by 35%. No need to explain why that's very good. So if you're going to be shield botting, you might as well just run max HP for the circlet for the goblet as well as the sands and then for the substats you want to prioritize hp over anything then after that elemental mastery for a little bit better crystallized shields since you want to have as much shields as possible and lastly for the other slots you might as well have some crit attack and er just for the extra damage next we get to the burst support artifacts so let's start off with the four piece sets and i'm gonna say this once more time if you have c1 go for tenacity of millilith four piece it's gonna be your best in slot but if you don't have c1 i have some other recommendations My my personal number one recommendation is the four piece noblesse not only do you increase your own burst damage but then after using your burst you can increase your teammates attack by 20 percent and the best part is that your burst cooldown is already at 12 seconds so if you have 100 percent uptime on your burst your teammates will always be benefiting from the four piece noblesse set the next one i'll recommend is the four piece emblem set now this one not only gives you energy recharge so you have faster burst uptime but it also does more burst damage depending on how much energy recharge you have next i'm gonna put all the two pieces on the screen that you can use together now honestly you're not losing if you run any of these two with each other and this consists of two piece noblesse the two piece archaic shiminawa's gladiator millilith and the two piece emblem now when it comes to the stats that you want you want to either start off with crit rate or crit damage yet again you want to achieve a one to two or even a one to three ratio depending on how high your crit rate is then for the goblet you just want to go for geo damage pretty simple you just do a lot of burst damage and then for the sands it really just depends what set you run so so for every single set that you run you want to go for hp percent but if you are running the four piece noblesse or the four piece emblem severed fate you want to run energy recharge instead so that you can spam your burst and utilize your four piece sets lastly when it comes to substats your first priority is crit stats then you want to have second priority for hp and energy recharge equally and then for your 
third priority attack. Keep in mind that when it comes to the burst support set, you're not only doing a lot of burst damage, but you also have a lot of shield strength. All right, so now let's talk about Zhongli's constellations very quickly. Like I said, the only one that's actually worth it is C1. If you're a dolphin and you pull C1, don't worry, it's actually pretty good. Not only increases damage and energy, but you can also now use the tenacity of Millilith set. Now, the second one is when you use your burst, you get a Jade Shield, which is the shield that you get from your E skill. This one is more important for co-op and not much for solo. So in terms of C2, it is not that useful. C3 increases your E skill by three levels. As for C4, it's very mediocre. It increases your burst AOE by 20% and petrification lasts for two more seconds. Like I said, it's really not worth the C4, but if you want to pull for it in your well, go ahead. C5 increases your burst level by three. Finally, we have C6, which is the only other good constellation other than C1. And to put into simple terms, when your shield is up and you get attacked, you get healed by a decent amount. It's definitely not worth the money. So sticking with C0 or C1 is honestly the best thing you could do but let's be honest nobody can stop a whale now we finally reached the team comp section and there's one thing i've always been advocating when zhongli players ask me what team i should use with them and the first thing i tell them is always put another geo character on the team you not only get increased shield strength for 15 percent but any character protected by a shield also does 15 percent more damage and when you attack an opponent their geo resistance is lowered by 20 percent and that pretty much means that the enemy is always going to be weak to geo so a unit i definitely recommend is albedo because his solar isotoma is pretty much a geo construct and resonates with your zhongli pillar and on top of that it just does a lot of damage in the back you could also run yunjin for main dps zhongli because her burst increases zhongli's normal attack by a lot another character you can run is definitely bennett or Chong Yun if you want to go for Cryo. Mona works as well. Raiden Shogun, Sing Cho, Beidou. All of these are viable options for main DPS Zhang Li. But next, let's get into the shield bot and burst support teams. Yet again, I'm still going to be recommending another Geo character because it's always going to help for both sides. But let's just say you don't have one. You could run something like Xiao, a main DPS, which is actually pretty good if protected by a shield because he's not able to animation cancel during plunge. And we also have Bennett. Something like Kokomi works as well, just for that little bit of healing and off-field damage. You can have Hu Tao and Sing Cho on one team and then maybe Raiden and Shogun just for a little bit of fireworks comps. In the end of the day, if Zhongli is being used as support, you can use them on just about any team. So in conclusion, Zhongli is the best C0 5 star in the game and for all the people who ask me whether I should pull for him or not, my answer is always yes, just because of how solid and good he is for pretty much any team comp. And if this video helped at all, a like and subscribe would be appreciated. And if you turn on the bell notification, I'm going to be dropping a Yae Miko guide the first day she comes comes out so you can stay tuned in for that anyway see you guys on the next one peace Bruh.